So I'm going to hand over to Peter now to give you a demo of how AWS Storage Gateway Volumes can be used to do cross-site failover. So in this demo that we're about to do, uh, we have uh, an environment that consists of uh, some infrastructure in San Francisco, which is our, uh, acting as our primary location, and a disaster recovery location in Boston. And what we have is we have both an application server and a storage gateway in volume mode configured in San Francisco where we're actively writing data. As you can see, that data gets written to US East 1 where that gateway is registered. And what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a failure state in that we'll, we'll kill both the application server and the gateway in San Francisco. And from there, we'll go to the AWS console and we'll create a clone using the storage gateway cloning mechanism and we'll present that to Boston where we'll see our data with a small amount of data loss from the point in time in which we failed in San Francisco. So as you can see here, this is my uh, Windows server in San Francisco that we have the San Francisco desktop wallpaper on. Uh, and it's, uh, if I open Disk Manager here, you'll see that it has both a boot volume, so a C drive in the case of Windows, and a D drive. This is actually a volume gateway volume. Um, so I'm actually connected to that via iSCSI. You'll see that I have an iSCSI target, and that is actually the, the D drive on this particular, this particular server, which is hosted on a volume gateway in the same location, same network. And you'll con you can see I'm actively writing data to this volume. So I'll quickly show you what that looks like from the console's perspective. So here we have the AWS console. If I just go to uh, Northern Virginia or US East 1, and I go to Storage Gateway, you'll actually see two storage gateways in this console. You'll see the San Francisco one that has one active volume. We'll take a look at the volume. You can see that that's 100 gigabytes in capacity that was provisioned there, which maps directly to the size of the volume that we're writing to. So you can see this is the the gateway volume that we're currently writing to in our primary San Francisco location. Now, currently in Boston, we've deployed uh, a gateway and, and a Windows server there as well, but there's no volumes attached. It's really just a warm standby for disaster recovery. So if you take a look quickly at the data that I'm writing, simulating an application, I've, I've written about 3,000 images to this uh, gateway volume from my Windows server in San Francisco. And what we're going to do next is we're actually going to kill both the gateway volume, the gateway, I should say, the data of the volume stored in, in US East 1, um, but we're going to kill the gateway and this Windows instance that we're on here, this Windows server. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, any moment now. And, oh, there we go. So, so what I've effectively done then there is I've simulated the, a failure by by taking down the virtual machine running the gateway and, and the Windows server itself. So this is simulating a, a real disaster, losing all my infrastructure in my San Francisco location. So next, I log on to my Boston location where I have a very similar server to the one I was running in San Francisco. The main difference being at this point in time, it only has a boot volume. It doesn't actually have my data volume attached to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a clone copy of the volume that we were presenting into San Francisco into our Boston location so that we can recover from this disaster in Boston. You'll see I'm already actually iSCSI connected to a warm standby gateway as well. You'll see the IP address of the gateway there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the console now. I'm going to go into storage gateway, and I'm going to create a new volume in Boston from the original volume that was being presented to San Francisco. You can see at this point, from the console's perspective, my San Francisco gateway is no longer available because we, we killed it running that script from the San Francisco location. So what I'll do now is I'll create a volume, and I'm going to create it on the Boston gateway. I'm going to create, make it 100 gigabytes, just like the original volume and I'm going to clone from the last recovery point. And you'll see it'll then give me a list of available volumes that I have within that region. Now, in this case, the only volume I have was the one that I was presenting to San Francisco. 
and I'm going to give my iSCSI target a name. And then from there, I click Create. And this task is, uh, is near immediate, so it's not relative to the amount of data we were storing in the volume at all. OK, so at this point, I should just be able to refresh my uh, iSCSI target on that gateway. And you can see there's a new one called Recover. And let me just get this console window out of the way so we can see what happens. And I'll click Connect. And you can see there's a 100 gig volume. And this is the volume that, we, that, was, that was being presented to San Francisco prior, or a copy of the volume that was being presented to San Francisco prior to the failure. OK, so now we can see the volume uh, has been given a drive letter, and we can now open it up and take a look at the content. So if we scroll down, we'll just see uh, the data that, that we were writing previously in San Francisco, and you'll see the majority of it has made it across. So there would be a small amount of data loss. Um, anything that was in sort of the upload buffer, it hadn't been flushed yet, is lost. But you can see we've still got approximately 3,000 images that have been transferred in this process. So what we've really done here is we've taken a, an operating system an application running in San Francisco that was writing to the, to the gateway, which stored its data in, in, in the storage gateway service in US East 1. We've taken out that primary location, and we've been able to really quickly, so a really fast recovery time, been able to present the volume as it was when that failure took place to our Boston server and then continue running business. So you can see it's a very fast recovery time and very little data loss. Well, thanks, Peter. That's really awesome. I love seeing that in action. And as you say, the speed of restore is kind of impressive. Certainly, um, we've tried to race it in the office and, and copy volumes, clone volumes, and uh, it happens almost instantaneously. So you can run it through our API as well if you don't have all the clicking. And it, it, it happens, as Peter says, nearly instantaneously. So a really nice way to use Storage Gateway to do volume recovery, volume backup, and volume recovery between locations within your same location or into the cloud. If you want to learn more about Storage Gateway, URLs on the screen here, aws.amazon.com slash storage gateway.